Hi guys, I'm Scott Mansell from driver61.com and thanks for joining me for our guide to how to heel and toe. This video is going to explain exactly how to heel and toe when you're on track in your car. We're going to take a look at what the heel and toe technique actually is, why you would want to downshift this way, a step-by-step -step guide to how to heel and toe including the order of your inputs and how to position your feet, and finally the best way to practice heel and toe so you're well prepared to try it on the circuit. If you'd like to read the full article, please click the link in the description below, which will take you to driver61.com, where you can also find a downloadable cheat sheet to really help your progression with this technique. So without further ado, let's take a look at what it means to heel and toe. So I'm sure we've all seen this fantastic footage of Ayrton Senna in the Honda NSX at the Suzuka circuit. His footwork and his footwear are just incredible. So when you hear the car decelerating and the revs peaking a couple of times, like this, that's the heel and toe technique in full swing and Ayrton is making a smooth downshift. Heel and towing is a technique whereby you match your car's engine speed or revs to your car's wheel speed to create a smooth downshift. If you don't match the engine's revs to the wheel speed, you risk locking up the driven axle. You do this by using your right foot across both the brake and accelerator pedals, toe on the brakes, and your heel or the side of your foot on the accelerator pedal. So to better understand why we need to heel and toe, we're going to take a quick look at a gear ratio chart for a race car or in fact a road car. So on the bottom axis here, you see we have the speed going from 0 to 100 and on the vertical axis we have the RPM going again from 0 to 10,000. Uh, across the top here, you can see that we have the actual gear ratios themselves. So first, second, third, fourth, and fifth gear. So if you take a look at first gear, the red line, you can see that the line goes from zero down here, accelerating up to 10,000 RPM. So if we take a look, we can see that at 10,000 RPM, the car will be doing approximately, approximately 20 miles an hour. Very simple to understand. On the other side of things, in fifth gear, which is a longer ratio, you can see that beginning at zero RPM and zero miles per hour, the line accelerates up to where it's doing 100 miles an hour at 10,000 RPM. And all of the gears are fractions of this as you move along the speed and the RPM. So, for example, if we take a look at fifth gear here, the yellow line, you can see that at 80 miles an hour, the engine speed is 8,000 RPM. So you can imagine that you're approaching a corner and you are traveling at 80 miles an hour and 8,000 RPM. However, for this corner, you need to downshift, you need to decelerate and then downshift. So at some point you'll get on the brakes, you'll dip the clutch and you'll change down from 5th to 4th gear. So at 80 miles an hour, if you make the downshift at this speed, in 5th gear the car will be doing 8000 RPM. However, when you put the car into 4th gear, the engine speed will need to be 10,000 RPM. So if you imagine just jamming the car into 4th gear from this point, the engine will increase in revs and it will actually give you some engine braking. So that means that this can transfer through to the wheels and could, could cause a lockup. So to stop this, we need to make the difference in the RPM from the 8,000 here in fifth gear up to the 10,000 here in fourth gear. And we do this by heel and towing. So you imagine you're coming up to the corner, you get on the brakes, you dip the clutch, you go to change into fourth gear, you then blip the accelerator up to 10,000 RPM and release the clutch 
then you have a smooth gear change. Okay, so hopefully now you understand a little bit more about why we need to heel and toe. But obviously when we're carrying out this uh, transition in gears, there's a lot of inputs that you have to put into the car and it can become quite complex. So, so imagine that we're accelerating along a straight up to a corner. Uh, here you can see we are accelerating in fourth gear. Here's the gear on a display on the left hand side. Um, as you can see by the image of the pedal box here, we are just accelerating. The left foot's doing nothing and the right foot is just on the accelerator. Now on the right hand side of the screen here, we have the gears and RPM chart. So as you can see, we have the gear ratio for first here, into second, third, fourth and fifth. And on the right hand side, uh, we have a chart for the speed. So you can imagine we are accelerating up in first gear to a certain speed across here. Then we change and we accelerate up in second. Then we change again and accelerate in third and so on and so on. And this is just a nice way to explain um, how we're going to accelerate through the gears. So as I mentioned, we're accelerating up to a corner. Um, we're about to brake, but we're not braking just yet. Here you can see that the RPM is increasing and the speed is increasing too. So in the second slide here, you can see that we've arrived at our braking point for the next corner. We are still in fourth gear. However, our right foot has moved across from the accelerator pedal here to the brake pedal. On the gears RPM and speed chart here you can see that the RPM is beginning to reduce as well as the speed on the right hand side. So we're coming up to the corner, we're on the brakes and everything is slowing down the RPM and the speed as well. So the next slide is where things start to get tricky. Um, it's almost time for us to actually change down from fourth gear to third which will be the right gear for the next corner. So what we have to do here is we have to begin to rotate the foot, as you can see here. So our toes are on the brake pedal, but the side of our foot or the heel, depending on the pedal configuration, can reach across to almost press the accelerator. Now we're not pressing the accelerator just at this moment, but we're beginning to, uh, to rotate our foot and get ready for the downshift. Our uh, left foot here is just about to get on the clutch and um, just before we blip the accelerator we're going to depress the clutch. On the right hand side here you can still see that we're in fourth gear and the RPM is still coming down as well as the speed. So now it's actually time to change down from fourth to third gear. You can see here your right foot is just on the brake pedal as well as just touching the accelerator pedal here on the right hand side. The clutch is already down. So the clutch is down, your toes are just on the brake pedal, you then just blip the accelerator pedal with the side of your foot or with your heel and then you change from fourth to third gear. So at this moment you're not actually in any gear. Uh, the car is freewheeling with the clutch down with the engine RPM is slightly increasing as you blip the accelerator and the speed is still decreasing as you're approaching the corner. So finally we've blipped the accelerator and now it's time to release the clutch. Hopefully the engine speed will match the wheel speed and as we release the clutch we'll have a smooth downshift. We're still on the brakes here and we're still decelerating the RPM now and decelerating the speed as we approach the corner and in a few moments now that we've let the clutch out it will be time to begin to release the brakes as we turn the car into the corner and then we'll continue to make our way through and out of the uh, the next corner. So that's it, that's every input that you need to make when you're making a heel and toe downshift. There's a lot going on and it takes a lot of practice so in a few moments we're just going to run over some video to see how this happens in action. 
So who better to show us how to heal and tow other than the one and only Ayrton Senna? Now you'll have to excuse the footage, the quality isn't the best, but it is from 1992 and this guy's uh, socks and shoes are just incredible. So we're going to use it. So as you can see here on the left hand side of the screen, uh, we have the accelerator, the brake and the clutch. Um, Ayrton's coming up to a left hand corner here at Suzuka and he's flat out on the accelerator. Now, as we go frame by frame, you'll see that Ayrton moves his foot from the accelerator over to the brake. He's just about to get on the clutch pedal there on the left-hand side as well. As he's on the brakes, he dip in the clutch on the left-hand side, blipping the accelerator. And at this point, you can see his left hand is moving from the steering wheel to change gear. So he's on the brakes. The clutch is fully depressed now. He's changing gear with the gear stick, giving the car a blip of accelerator with the side of his foot there. Now he's beginning to release the clutch. And at this point, the whole RPM and the wheel speed should be matching as he's releasing the clutch. And he's gone down one gear as he turns into the left-hander here at Suzuka with a tiny little bit of opposite lock. So let's just watch that through one more time so that you can see it in full flow and how the downshift and how quickly the downshift happens. As I've mentioned, this is a difficult technique and one that will take a bit of practice before you perfect it. The best thing to do is to practice in your road car before you head out onto the track, obviously in a safe area where there are no other cars around. Initially, try to find a gentle hill where the car will decelerate naturally. This way you won't have to brake for the car to slow down and you'll just be able to focus on the downshift and rev matching. Everything will also happen a bit slower without braking, so you'll have more time to think. It's best to first try with a downshift that isn't across the gate so I suggest using fourth to third gear. Approach the hill with some speed and release the accelerator. As the car begins to slow, dip the clutch and as you're changing from fourth to third, blip the accelerator. Then when the engine revs are increased, release the clutch. The trick here is not to hear any increase or decrease in the engine revs as you should have matched them perfectly. Once you've mastered the heel and toe on the hill, it's time to include the brake pedal. Everything is the same, apart from you'll have to use your foot in a slightly awkward way and the process will need to be slightly faster as you're slowing down more quickly. Before you practice with all three pedals, run through the process in your car on your driveway as many times as possible. It'll also help if the pedals are set up correctly with the throttle and the brake relatively close together. Once you've learned a little muscle memory, get practicing in your road car and once again make sure it's safe to do so if you're using the public road. It'll take you a while to have the feel for a perfect hill and toe downshift, but once you've cracked it on the road, it will feel great on the track and you'll be faster and more consistent too. So that's about all. Thank you very much for watching and I'd love to hear any questions or comments. So if you have any, please leave them below and I'll get back to you. This is a new channel for Driver61, so if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please help us out by sharing and subscribing to the Driver61 channel just below. If you'd like to read the full article about how to heal and tow and to download our free cheat sheet as well as view all the other how-to and circuit guides, please visit the Driver61 website by clicking on the upcoming link. Thanks again and see you next time.